Uh, it's good to speak to you today. Um, how was your new year? Um, it was pretty good. Yeah, I spent it. Uh, I spent celebrating just with my at my friend's house. We had a, I had a few buddies over, and it was it was pretty nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I've got I've got to an age now where I host dinner parties, so that's what I did this year. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I watched a movie today. Actually, I've sort of left it quite late, but I thought it was really good. I thought your role was sort of fascinating, really. But I wonder what it was when you first kind of got this script in, when your sort of agent brought it to you. What what, what made you think, right? This is this is my next project. I thought it was the. I thought the reason I was so attracted to playing this role was just because it was just so such a different character from what I've played before, and that's what that's what I was so interested in it's very unique uh and I was excited to kind of tap into those emotions and see how I could play that um so that's really the main reason I I, I wanted to do this one I've been interested to know actually as you're giving you kind of as, as you sort of get older has your the process in taking on a role has it become more independent than it once was I imagine when you were much younger yeah. your parents would have played such a huge part in the kind of final decision oh, but yeah, definitely. Is, it, is it quite a different process for you yeah, yeah. So it's changed a lot, and um, it's kind of transitioned over a long period of time. Because at the start, when I was super young, starting out, like I think seven or eight, a lot of it was um, I could kind of listen to the director, but a lot of it was you know my parents kind of having to translate a lot of that to me. For example, Room. The thing about Room is that I I I couldn't understand the full story. Obviously, I was so young, and it's such a such a mature you know story. I, I, I couldn't really understand that. And that kind of worked with the character in a way because he also doesn't understand what's going on. So a lot of the time it had to be um, a lot of made up reasons to why this is happening or this is this just in the moment to make sure the, uh, you know, my little performance was, was coming across as well. Yeah, no, it was just because you, you sort of said something that was quite interesting where your parents had to kind of translate projects to yeah, you. Yeah. I'm just interested to know about now being privy to the full script, the full project details and conversations with directors. Is has, Does it feel almost like a completely different experience now stepping onto a film yeah, set? Yeah, pretty much. Because at the start, I couldn't even read the, I couldn't even read the script, um, which is, you know, when I was super young. But uh, yeah, over time, then I guess I started, I was able to, to be able to read the script and, and fully take in what's going on and understand it. And as I got older, have deep discussions with the director and all that stuff. So yeah, it's been, it's definitely been a journey kind of discovering that and just trying new things. Cause when you're so young, it's so easy to kind of tap into that. And I think the reason I was so good at it when I was little is because all I did when I was young was I just, I just like played pretend. That's all I did. Like I didn't play any sports or anything like that. And, uh, I would just pretend that I was, you know, Luke Skywalker, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think that's part of the reason I could kind of tap into it so well. And then obviously, as I got older, unfortunately, you kind of lose that imagination, which sucks because that is what you need to to be an actor. Um, so, you know, it's kind of interesting because you kind of got to keep that imagination as you get older. Yeah, that is interesting because I think you would assume that the older you get, actually, the more kind of um, rich life experiences you've got to then put into characters. But you're right, you kind of, like, I guess you act less on instinct. We overthink a lot, yeah. don't we, when you get older? <laughs> yeah, you start to think more about it. That's the tricky thing. And that's what you kind of have to not to do because sometimes you don't you don't want to think in a scene. You just want to you just want to feel it. You know what I mean? Like the thinking can come afterwards when you look back at it and you can see, oh, well, this works, this didn't. And when you're when you're at that age, when you're like eight years old, that that doesn't really matter. That's the director's job. And you, you mentioned about sort of like trying sort of new things. And this, your character speaks a, 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 another language just briefly. I was wondering when that's the kind mm. of I'm interested to know when that happens in a script and there's a little moment when you've got to speak in Russian or any sort of other language. Do you have to like kind of learn stuff around it, or do you just learn the words on the page and just hope it kind of sounds good? <laughs> I just I just learned the words on the page and just cross my fingers it sounded good. Um, I knew the meaning behind it, which obviously is very important. Um, I think it'd be very different if I, I went into saying those lines and, and didn't know what I was saying. But um, yeah, so I knew what I was saying and uh, it took a few videos and of of learning how to say it. Um, I just wanted to make sure I, I looked like I know what I was doing because um, I, I think it came across well. Though. I think it I think it did. And I was, I was worried though if I would be able to kind of portray emotion while while doing that um instead of just focusing totally on the pronunciation and this and that 
but uh, I think I was able to, to have a good balance. Yeah, yeah, no, it came across well. But I'm interested in regards to kind of like um, relating to the character at all. I mean, obviously, this character's le led a kind of very different life to your own, but he he still has had a kind of um, him himself be in the kind of public eye. He's had a bit of media attention and people kind of interested to know about him. Could you connect to him on those terms at least? And that kind of like being someone who does have a kind of, you know, has, has intrigue from the kind of general public around them? Yeah. I mean, I think just our situation is, is is totally different though as an actor and then as someone who you know had a really famous mother who was a who's a writer and passed away. But yeah, I definitely could see how I could relate to that a little bit. Um, how the public always you know has a certain idea about you and who you are as a person. Um, obviously, I think Igor has just had very bad experiences with it, um, which is why his father is so protective of him and so protective of you know who gets to talk to him. When it comes to that kind of stuff um but me i've been very fortunate i've i've had a really good time with the you know, i've had i've had no issues personally so yeah i wanted to ask about working with bell powley because she's actually she sort of grew up in london quite close to me actually oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> always been kind of following her career and i've interviewed her quite a, sort of a number of times now uh, and we get on quite well she's a really great actress and it's great to see her kind of go ahead yeah. and stay to make movies like this i mean pretty much all of your scenes are with her can you just talk about the collaboration process with bell on this project yeah yeah no she's she's a great person to work with um i find it very very easy to dive into the emotions with her um I said this before, she has very um, expressive eyes. Like she's able to display so much emotion with her with her eyes. And I think it's great because um, when you're in a scene with that, that just, you know, kind of projects back onto you. So it's it's really easy to, to tap into the emotions with her. And I, yeah, I had a really fun time on this on the set with her. There's some really fun scenes too, uh, like the whole thing in the sugar factory, um, which I think we filmed over a day or two and the stuff on the roof. Um, I, I had a really good time with it. And obviously working with Roxine as well. I mean, it, it's obviously, you, you've worked with such a number of fantastic filmmakers now, quite a remarkable amount, actually, by, by your age. But this, this is a kind of first-time filmmaker. Can you just, is there any difference when you kind of step onto a set and there's someone doing doing that kind of first feature film compared to someone who's made seven or eight kind of movies? Do, do you notice that in any way, shape, or form? Yeah. Um, hmm. For me, no, there's, there's really no difference. Um, if I didn't know, I would have never guessed that it was Roxine's first film because the the way she had control over the set was was fantastic. I mean, she had such a strong vision and she knew exactly what she wanted. Um, she's she's very very talented, very very gifted with her with her craft, and I really enjoyed kind of seeing that and being a part of that. Because um, I part of me wants to you know get into filmmaking and directing and script writing, mm -hmm. and I'm still very very young. So to kind of see that and see that her on set and, you know, obviously being her first, you know, feature film, I think uh, is very, very inspiring to me. I think it'd be very inspiring to others. Yeah, yeah it's an impressive debut. But is it, I was actually going to ask you if you had any kind of ambitions one day to kind of step behind the lens. But is it, it could because you sort of said that that is something that's, I mean, obviously it's very early days in your career, but something kind of yeah. in the in the future but are you now when you're on set are you kind of consciously watching how the filmmaker works and trying to kind yeah. of absorb it and take notes definitely um i think i think that whole idea of me wanting to become a script writer or director just comes from my my passion for storytelling mm. i love storytelling ever since i was little it was my favorite subject was creative writing um because i could just create stories that i loved um Recently, I've been trying to make short films, just for fun. Uh, I did a I did a school I just did a school class, just a video production class. Mm -hmm. I made a documentary about um my grandpa who immigrated to uh, Canada from Chile during um uh when Pinochet was was over control was you know controlling Chile. So that was like my first time doing an independent project. That, that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think I'm I'm pretty interested in kind of getting into that. Yeah. Would you be willing or be up for kind of um, releasing that, that 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 short project at all? Or is it very much just a kind of just for you and your <laughs> for now? It's kind of just for me, but I think it'd be pretty cool in the future. Say things work out really well and I do become a filmmaker. It'd be kind of cool to put that out into the public and people can look at that and be like, hey, that was his first thing. Yeah. And that'd be cool. 
It's interesting because you mentioned about being so kind of interested in storytelling. And I think obviously story in cinema, so much of it is the kind of world of make-believe. But in in the in this movie, in Cold Copy, it, it really focuses on truth. The whole kind of film is really about the importance yeah. of honest, truthful journalism. I just wondered about how, do you think it's a really like quite timely and quite important time for a film like this to be released given the kind of world of social media and fake news and the kind of inability to necessarily trust what you're reading at the moment? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting things about the internet right now because there's a whole thing about AI and all that stuff coming out, um, and knowing who to trust, um, it it can be tricky. It can can really be tricky. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm glad this kind of movie expresses that, talks about that, um, but it uses journalism, of course, which is a very journalism's been around for a long time. A lot of the problems nowadays are very new, um, but yeah, journalism's been a long for a very long time. So people are very familiar with that, familiar with that world. Um, so, yeah. And you spoke about the sort of big take, wanting to take on this role because it was quite different to anything you've done before. Yeah. Is, that, is, that, do you, is that a conscious decision on you, about from you when you take on kind of future projects and stuff? Do you, do you, do you just go on the script and if, if the character just elicits something inside of you or are you actually kind of consciously looking for like a different type of role could would you say right now I want to try a comedy or now I want to try something a bit more dramatic yeah. is, it, is there a kind of game plan or is it is it just seeing how the where the wind blows oh a lot of it is seeing where the wind blows but um another lot of it is is yeah seeing what's different about this character um because I don't think it'd be good to to play the same character you know over and over again um I like to kind of explore all the different types of emotions a lot of things too and this comes this comes afterwards when i've decided that like i've wanted to be a part of the project i always try and i think this everyone does this but you always try and find like things that you have in common with the character and then see how little and you can see how much or see how little you have in common with the character the thing about igor is i had very little in common with him which was exciting to to get to play with that and see where it would take me yeah, do you think it gives you quite a good like understanding of of the world and of of people? Because you're constantly kind of trying to get into the head of so many different people from such an impressionable age when you kind of started yeah. as well to kind of have to absorb other people's personalities and thought processes. Do you think it's made you quite? I don't know. Has it given you quite a, a unique perspective on on the world? Do you think? Yeah, I was thinking about this the other day actually, and I was thinking like, you know, actors just have to be very compassionate. You know what I mean? They have to really, you know understand other people's emotions because when you're reading a script and you're looking at your character you got to just relate to that and and feel that emotionally um so i think definitely it, it it's helping me kind of when i talk to people and all that kind of stuff just and say someone comes to me and is having issues and that kind of stuff um in a in a way it's almost kind of like helped you know understand that person understand where they're coming from because obviously I'm so used to doing that with my characters, and I think it's 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 quite interesting actually, but yeah. I was going to say, as, as an audience member, it's, it's obviously because we started watching you when you, I mean, obviously Room, when you were so, you were so sort of young and we've sort of seen you on screen kind of grow up, you know, sort of like in, in every kind of role that passes you, a couple of inches taller, your voice is getting slightly yeah. deeper. And yeah. for as an audience member, it can be a, a slightly sort of, sort of weird sort of seeing you sort of like grow up on screen. But how is it for you to have had your kind of whole like so much of your life at half your life probably by now kind of on screen so you can you know we all have our own kind of embarrassing home videos that our parents took of us at school but yours are kind of they're all out there is that quite surreal to have your life documented in some ways on on screen in the yeah game? it is it's mm. very weird but I kind of love it because I love being able to see like my older interviews of like when when I was doing all the the press for room I think I was just a little guy I was just nine just nine years old or uh, eight or nine, kind of. But um, I love seeing that. And I was such a little goofball. Um, the thing is, like, people people thought I was being cute. I knew ex I knew exactly what I was doing. Um, it was all, it was <laughs> all, all my uh, shenanigans on, um, I, I can't do that anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I can't, I can't have that confidence anymore. You know, there's, there's a little, there's a little side of you when you're eight years old where you can, come across as quite cocky when you're when you're in interviews because obviously you're just no one's gonna get mad at you right but um as you get older that kind of changes and you know 
it, it would be weird if I if I acted the the, the same that way. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. But if you act cocky as an eight-year-old, it's cute. If you act cocky as a 17-year-old, you're just cocky. <laughs> yeah, you're just cocky. Yeah. And hate you. yeah, exactly. Have you noticed the kind of shift in the type of roles coming your way? That must be quite an exciting thing mm. for you as well, because you must have a completely different sort of, I mean, yeah. even looking ahead and some of the things landing on your desk, I mean, it must be so far removed to some of the stuff you've had so far in your career. Yeah, it's been it's been interesting. Um, I think I've been making the transition from like, little kid to, to young adult almost pretty pretty well so I'm excited where it takes me um yeah that's really the reason I was I, I wanted to do this role so much is it was so mature um Igor has um a lot of independence that um I haven't really seen before from a lot of characters that I've played um and that was a very mature trait about him that I think plays well into to my age now so my, yeah. my final question, just looking at it, one, one, of, one of the fascinating roles I know you've got coming up is The Life of Chuck, which I can't wait to see because mm. it's a great director, incredible cast, source material oh, yeah. from none other than Stephen King. I mean, how how was that experience for you? And also just on that note, you sort of spoke about when you took on like Room, you probably wouldn't have been able to like read the, the source material, but I guess now you kind of can and it's Stephen King's, that must be quite cool too. <laughs> very cool. It's very mm. exciting. Um, that's a, that was a really fun set to work on. Um, I love working with Mike Flanagan. He's he's fantastic. He's such a great director. Um, that was a really fun set, and I'm really excited for people to see that movie because I think it is very very interesting, super unique, super different from anything I've ever you know been a part of before or even seen for that matter. Yeah. It's a Bell Powley, Tom Hiddleston. You're working with a lot of English actors. Have you got any uh, sort of ambitions to come over here and, and shoot anything anytime soon? <laughs> I, I love England. It was funny because when I was younger, I did a movie um, called uh, The Life and Death of John F. Donovan, and we filmed the whole thing in England. Um, and it's funny because, ah, I hate to say it, but I think I just kind of went a little bit method with it. And I think in a way that it was kind of subconscious, I didn't realize I was going method with it. My character in the film is homesick of, of the U S um, he's, and you know, he's, he, his, him and his mom moved to, to London. So he's very homesick of, he wants to go back to America. And for some reason, when filming that, I was like, I started to feel the same way. And I was like, I almost felt like, oh, I didn't like England, which is crazy because now I look at now, I got to spend like a few weeks in London, which is a dream for, for me, a dream for many people because it's just such a such a beautiful place, um, especially at Christmas time. I love it at Christmas time, um, which it's just it's just kind of interesting to, to, to see that. Um, but but yeah, I would love to, to come back there for something. Little Mermaid, we did Little Mermaid um at Pinewood Studios so my little bit they recorded literally right before COVID happened um very was very nice and then um yeah we came back for the press kit um for some press of, of Little Mermaid but uh yeah I always love going there um, you guys make the best hot chocolate yeah <laughs> thank you <It's> <laughs> yeah i don't well the french might have something to say about that but no I don't, I don't. Ah. <laughs> you're right the christmas markets is good at the christmas markets but anyway uh, jacob it's been a real pleasure speaking to you today and best of luck with the release yeah. of the movie. and hopefully we'll get Thank to catch, so up, catch up again one day cool yeah cheers. sure bye cheers bye ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys <laughs> hey you guys <laughs> Hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys!